Okay, so I am making this video because right now uh, I am a parent to a new eight-week-old baby cat. A small little girl who is the most wonderful treasure I have ever had. The most magical thing I've ever made, to quote my wife, Mallow Cat. But I face a problem. See, a little bit of background. Some of my lore about being a paradimensional traveler, also like my other colleague character on this channel, Pseudonymous, who does docudramas and magic, trying to document parallel cultures, etc., and what magic means for them, is based on a bit of actual real-life history of mine. When I was a child, my father, who was a very abusive man, but I didn't realize until a couple of years ago, and until then had me worshipping the ground he walked on, took me on a sailing trip around the world with my stepmother, who had replaced my biological mother, who was physically abusive, and my younger brother, who, like me, is autistic, but more developmentally delayed. Now, <clears throat> I have to talk about my history not just with this trip, but also with my love-hate relationship with both science and magic. See, probably due to the trauma that I received when I was a child, I started having experiences that um, appeared like they could have been of other places in what I later call the multiverse. And at first I thought they were just, you know, random thoughts, but then they started doing things like helping me read people's minds and making predictions about the future, which came true. And now my grandfather was a physicist. Uh, he worked at a prominent university in Canada, and he also believed in parapsychology, the field and study of psychic and paranormal phenomena from a scientific angle. At least that's how he tried to do it. He himself had family experiences that also appeared paranormal, and he wanted to find a mechanism for what these things actually were. So when I started having these experiences, he encouraged me to document what I was experiencing and start looking for mechanisms. One of the very first things I did with this was that I also started looking in my real life around me for things that appeared to, for lack of a better word, be extra-dimensional, paranormal, or, or violated the laws of physics, and figure out how they worked. And the very first place I found was magic tricks. I picked up magic books as a kid. Initially, I tried a few tricks, realized they were either too simple or just not able to work with my, with my poor sucky um, coordination, and I abandoned tricks. But later, when I got to Bermuda, um, I started learning some serious magic tricks from a boat captain there, and uh, even before that, when I was in St. Augustine, Florida, during the sailing trip, I learned my first sleights of hands with coins. Now, the reason I bring up this particular thing about being a parent is because of an experience that happened between me and my younger brother. I was about probably between the ages of 10 and 11 in Bermuda. My brother was about age 8 or 9. Well, actually, no, sorry, 7 or 8, because we were about two and a half years apart. Anyway... Um, I was doing a little magic thing and sleight of hand, and I basically asked to borrow a guy's motorcycle helmet. I then pulled the same quarter by sleight of hand out of the bike helmet and put it in my back pocket and repeated the process. So I did this eight times, supposedly claiming $2 worth of money and quarters out of this guy's motorcycle hat. My brother, who is quite developmentally delayed, uh, looked in the motorcycle helmet and started feeling around trying to find the money. And when he couldn't find the money, he started bawling his eyes out because he wanted money from the helmet too. And I got in trouble for basically fooling him into believing that what I was doing was real. And this actually highlights a problem that I have been seeing throughout my time as a magician and mentalist. Um, when I was in my teenage years, I started doing psychic readings uh, over the internet after returning from the sailing trip. Um, I had heard about the possibility of reading cues. Um, I didn't know it was called cold reading at the time, but I'd heard about this. So I started doing readings directly over uh, Yahoo Messenger. No voice chat, no webcam, text only. So I had no clues that could be able to tell what I was getting at. 
I was still able to read people with an average of 40% accuracy. But, of course, I still figured that there was probably something that these skeptics would say to poo-poo my ideas and while I was trying to explore them. So I started getting into magic more seriously in order to shut the skeptics up. I then started, uh, as I was going through high school, I started reading into uh, parapsychological data. I eventually finally got my hands on actual scientific journals that were published by the Parapsychological Association, which is a affiliate of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. Um, but they basically are just interested in, you know, trying to find proof of the paranormal. But in the process, I learned how to use things like read statistics and, you know, understand how a paper is published and all this kind of thing. And that actually got me, well, I am published with two papers in two different fields now, one math, one social science. And my research into, uh, I'm still doing octave research into apparent extra-dimensional phenomena, more with a quantum non-locality bent. And I have a paper in preprint right now, which is undergoing peer review with a journal in this particular area. I hope to be working a new project this coming January when I return to university to do some statistical analysis on some radioactive decay-based random number generator data that was pre-recorded to see if I can find evidence of quantum non-locality. But that's all for a different time. I'm just filling in about this. My problem is the fact that magical thinking, however, has also served as a major problem in my life, both my developmentally delayed brother, and I also received an injury when I was once living in a city called Halifax here in, in Canada. I was busking, performing a magic act late at night, and I was doing an act where I basically made lights appear out of thin air and passed them through my body and through my clothing for the entertainment of the audience. Somebody walked up to me and said, you need to stop what you're doing right now. And I said, oh, I didn't realize I couldn't busk here. I'll move along. He said, no, you're violating the word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by performing magic, and you're endangering your soul and the souls of everyone else around you. Well, I scoffed at this, not knowing what else to do, and when I came to, there were bouncers pulling the guy off of me. I had been decked in the face for, you know, not honoring this guy's magical thinking beliefs. And now that I'm a parent, I am having to think about how am I going to encourage my kid to tell the difference between reality and fantasy and not engage in magical thinking, while also looking at things that seem anomalous and being able to scientifically try to find the secret of what actually goes into it. Being autistic myself... Um, I've been looking for sources for good quality examples on how to parent because my parents were absolute shit, so I didn't have a good role mo I didn't have a good set of role models growing up for how to parent a kid. And one of the series that I have been taking great inspiration from is the Australian series by Ludo Productions called Bluey. Now, this series is written from a kid's point of view, and you know, it's basically for kids and, you know, kids learning through play, etc. But they do show how the parents actually handle various issues with kids and try to teach the kids until the kids learn through play. So I have been picking up some of Chili uh, and Bandit Healer's stop parenting style from the series Bluey and adopting it for how I'm thinking of raising my own kid with my wife Malocat. Now... The problem is, though, is that I am worried that this kind of magical thinking will happen to younger kids. You know, the idea of seeing a magic trick or seeing something that looks like it might be, you know, miraculous or what have you, and that they'll fall for it, or that they will, you know, not be able to tell the difference between reality and fantasy and have fears based on it. Uh, one example that my wife and I were talking about is a possibility uh, for a Bluey episode, hypothetically, was that uh, the kids, Bluey and Bingo, go with their parents to see a magic show, and that Bingo sees a lady sawn in half and restored together, and then possibly starts reacting, well, what happens the next time? What if the lady is cut in half forever? I mean, this was a hypothetical idea, but, you know, I am planning on emailing Ludo Productions after I finish this video um, in order to be able to, you know, have an idea of kids learning how to, uh, you know, connect pretend, playing pretend, to other things that they see in the media and telling the difference between real and pretend on TV, on the internet, in books, etc. 
Like, how do you how do you develop a sense of critical thinking at a very young age? And the reason I made this video, besides getting this element off my chest, that I was put in trouble for fooling my developmentally delayed brother, which my wife and I agree I shouldn't have been in trouble for, I would like your guys' thoughts on how to engage children in telling the difference between reality and fantasy based on what they see in media or see in a magic performance or elsewhere when they're at the young ages of, you know, between three and six or growing a little older. If you are a parent watching this video, please leave your thoughts in the comments below on how you handled being able to teach your kids the difference between knowing reality from knowing fantasy. Um, now, again, I will be doing a video later on my research into what looks like psychic phenomena because there are some problems with skeptics as well as proponents, and I'll quote a bunch of studies to show where everybody screwed up in that field and what we should be looking for and also referencing previous videos based on literature reviews, etc. But that's not for now. What is for now is I'd like... I'd like to ask parents, how do you engage your kids in the talk between reality and fantasy? I had bad parents growing up in this spot, and I was lucky to have a physicist's grandfather who helped me try to quantify what I was experiencing in the hopes of learning the difference between reality and fantasy. He and I did not see eye to eye on my learning magic, though. He thought that if I was exploring the real thing, I didn't need to learn magic tricks. I disagreed. I thought that by learning magic, I could distinguish between what might be genuine, you know, extra-dimensional phenomena and just trickery, and hopefully learn a little bit of critical thinking in the process. And I do eventually want to turn this channel of overlapping magisteria, and me as La Magie de la Vie, with live streams, etc., into using magic as a uh, basis for science, and math, and critical thinking education. I've got some ideas I'm still building, as well as also doing the docudramas with pseudonymous under the Series Observer Report. But in the process of that, I want your thoughts as parents. How should I engage my kids in the talk of critical thinking? What have you done? What evidence do you have for best practices? What would you recommend? So leave your thoughts in the comments below. And uh, since I'm going to have my colleague, quote-unquote, pseudonymous, share this on Facebook... Anybody who is uh, watching this video from Facebook as well, feel free to leave comments on the Facebook post about how you handled the critical thinking education, uh, the critical thinking talk of separating reality and fantasy with your kids. Or if you were a kid and remember how your parents handled it and, and, and if they did it in a good way, you know, let me know what they thought there. So, um, yeah, I guess this completes this episode of Maggie's Musings. Um, but yeah, I, I needed to get this off my chest and, you know, just get the thoughts out there in the hopes that parents will be able to help a struggling new parent out so that by the time I actually do approach this conversation with my daughter when she's old enough, baby cat, um, I'll be able to, I'll be able to talk, I'll be able to have a heart to heart with her that will, you know, help her either learn through play or something else, the difference between pretend and reality in the media and elsewhere. That little dose of critical thinking that I think kids need to start with. Uh, anyway, catch you guys in the next video. Thanks again for stopping by.